So our liquid line continues to flow to the inside unit, and on that inside unit we have our next component. Our next component, we're going to use a black pen, and we're going to draw a circle with an X through it. That circle with an X through it is a symbol, and that symbol has, of course, in HVAC, two names. One of the names is called a metering device. It's also called an expansion device. And its job is to restrict or meter the flow of refrigerant from a high pressure liquid to a saturated, a low pressure saturated mixture. We're going to talk about this word saturated later on, but it, the metering device, also called an expansion device, it restricts the flow of refrigerant from a high pressure liquid to a low pressure saturated mixture. Coming out of our metering device is approximately 75% liquid and 25% flash gas. And we're going to talk more about this later but this is going to be low pressure so high pressure comes in low pressure comes out metering device now there's three basic most commonly used types of metering devices behind this unit we're going to see this type of metering device and this is my favorite it's called a thermostatic expansion valve so what it's going to actually do is open and close and adjust it has several components on it such as a sensing bulb and it's got a equalizer tube on it and it's really cool we're going to go into way more detail about these later but the refrigerant comes in as a liquid, comes out as a low temperature, low pressure, saturated mixture. On this side of it, we notice all of these tubes. These are called distribution tubes. And this little component right here is called a distributor. What we're doing is taking that low pressure, saturated mixture and distributing it to multiple spots in the coil. This allows the second law of thermodynamics to be more efficient and we're actually able to transfer heat through the coil more effectively. So here we can see our thermostatic expansion valve, metering device, expansion device in the system. So this liquid line goes up to this point. From here, it's low pressure coming out. This is our distributor. These are distribution tubes, and these tubes carry refrigerant to multiple spots in the coil. So we're going in, in this case, in one, two, three, four, five, six different locations, and we come out as one, two, three, four, five, six different locations. So it's just divide and conquer, essentially. Let's not get too hung up in that, but this is a specific type, a thermostatic expansion valve. It's a valve, so it opens and closes. Let's talk about some other types of metering device. This one is also very popular. This is a fixed orifice. It's a metering device. It's also an expansion device. It's not a valve, but it is an expansion device. As we unscrew this fitting, the metering device will actually be inside. And inside of here, notice the hole in the very, very center. That hole is an orifice, and the hole is a fixed size. So it's a fixed orifice expansion valve. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop it out and we can see what it looks like. And if you see, you can actually look right through the hole there in the very center. I don't know if you can see the hole right there. So the size of this hole is gonna be very important and the metering device always matches the compressor. In this case, the size of this is a 080. You can actually try this with the compressor. We'll be doing this later on, but it's a fixed orifice or a fixed hole metering device. And these are also called pistons because the little hole that they fit into, if we put this together and shake this, it actually can hear that little piece move back and forth. Now in AC mode, it's always shoved up one direction and it only flows in one direction in AC mode, but this is a fixed orifice metering device, also called a piston, but it is a fixed orifice metering device. It is also an expansion device and these are distribution tubes. The other metering device that is used in older systems 
The other metering device that we use in older systems is also a fixed style metering device. This is our liquid line running in. And in here is sometimes the screen, but more importantly, notice how this has all of these little pieces are brazed into it. These tubes are very small. These are what we call capillary tubes. And the size and the length of these tubes together make, make it a metering device. So this is our metering device right here. These tubes, look how small these little tubes are. Now, a lot of people get these tubes mixed up with these tubes. These are distribution tubes. These are capillary tubes. This is your metering device. If you notice, there's a significant size difference. These are much larger than these tubes are. So the manufacturers actually calculated how much tubing they need, what size tubing, and the length of that tubing to make it have the correct amount of pressure drop. So this is a capillary tube, and you can always tell because they have some kind of a funny end like this, and they're usually brazed together like this, all these little bitty ports brazed in there. Capillary tube. Now they still distribute the refrigerant to multiple locations in the coil. So here you can see the capillary tubes still distribute in the multiple places, very similar to the distribution tubes. We have one, two, three on this side, and also on the other side we have another one, two, and three. But it's still, these tubes themselves are the metering device. Now not all capillary tubes have multiple lines. In this case, this is a single capillary tube, and this is actually off of a refrigerator. We have another capillary tube here. It's just a single tube that runs in. A lot of window units you'll see a single tube like that running in. That is the actual metering device. Now you can replace capillary tubes. They're very difficult. Usually you're looking at, you're looking at some other significant repairs. But here's an example of one type of capillary tube. The distance of this tube and the size of this tube makes up the metering device. And these all come with charts. Refrigeration, what type of refrigerant you're working with, the horsepower you have, all these numbers you need to use to calculate the length and the sizing of the tubing. So this itself, capillary tube, this is a metering device. This is a metering device. And this fixed orifice right here is also a metering device. All of these are expansion devices. This is an expansion device. This is an expansion device. And this is a thermostatic expansion device. They are all expansion devices. They're all metering devices. They all restrict the flow of refrigerant from a high pressure liquid to a low pressure saturated mixture, approximately 75% liquid, 25% vapor. And we'll get into that also more soon. Let's talk about why it's so important to have that pressure drop. All of these are metering devices. All these are expansion devices. So we're gonna go back to our old friend here we use for demonstrating our gas loss. Remember that what the compressor did was decrease the volume. When it decreased the volume, it increased the temperature and the pressure. So we're just gonna do that again really quickly. We're gonna shut our little valve off to seal our system. We're gonna increase the pressure. We saw our pressure went up and also our temperature went up as well. We decreased the volume. Now what we're gonna do is allow for expansion. We're gonna decrease the pressure instantly. As I decrease the pressure instantly, we also see that our temperature dropped instantly as well. It allowed for that refrigerant, or the air in this case, to expand. When the air expanded, we had a pressure drop and a temperature drop. So what I'm gonna also do is close this valve again, and I'm going to increase the volume of this system. As I increase the volume, the pressure is going to decrease. It's gonna be below atmospheric pressure. Let's see what happens to this gauge. So in other words, we're gonna cause more expansion. If you notice, I increased the volume, my pressure dropped, and also my temperature dropped as well. And if I allow this gas to come back in, we'll increase that. So this is why we need to know that it's an expansion device. It's also a metering device. It restricts it from a high pressure liquid to a low pressure saturated mixture approximately 75% liquid, 25% vapor. So study that, we're gonna have a whole lot more information on these meeting devices, how they work, how we charge with them, and how they operate, as well as more meeting devices 
This is just that first step to understanding metering devices and why it's so important.